Well, I, I see Andrew driving. I bet what happened, I'm going to guess, is that we're off on our time zones. And Andrew's in Scottsdale, um, and he is an incredible agent. I'm going to brag on you for a second here, Andrew, if that's okay. Um, Andrew was uh, with another broker at one point and really doing well. He's, he's had an incredible career for a very long time. Um, Andrew was ranked as a top producer with nearly 200 million in closed transaction volume last year or in 2019 and was the number six team in our entire Keller Williams network. Um, his team climbed to the number one spot in the Scottsdale, Arizona area as well. And so, as I said, he's been in the business. Gosh, you got rookie of the year back in 1995. So you've been around, you've seen some fun things happen in the environment. Our market right now is very similar to Andrew. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to have him come on and talk about what it's like to sell, what it's like to stay positive in this environment. Also, how is he utilizing the KW tools? How was he using the KW tools back even when he wasn't even with KW. He's going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so we're super excited to have you, Andrew, and um, I will give you the floor now. Wow, Jennifer, amazing introduction. I'm super excited. Sorry that I'm in the car, but I'm really, really excited to join you guys today. And um, so my name is Andrew Bloom. I'm a successful real estate professional. I am energetic, honest, and disciplined. I treat people with respect and compassion. I'm healthy, I'm happy, and I am generous. I will commit each day to doing my personal best and to bring passion and integrity to each of my relationships. I have gratitude for all people and things around me. I am the best for ways to improve who I am so I can benefit others. My actions are intentional. My relationships are real. My name is Andrew Bloom and I am number one. Yes. Woo! That is quite an affirmation, y'all. That's, that's <laughs> just a short version. So, um, but I want to jump into this because we don't have a lot of time and I'm in the car and I look a little like I got a lot going on. The reality is I don't have a lot going on. I'm in a seventh level business. I live on the beach in Santa Monica. My kids who are in the car with me right now <laughs> run my team in Arizona. I just picked them up from the airport a few minutes ago in Santa Monica so they can present to the KWLAYP and my market center here in Santa Monica. Um, but I do run a great business. We were at 186 million in volume last year, 5.2 million in GCI. And um, I tell you, I am a living example of the MREA. And so I like to talk about that. Like it's very rare for anybody in the organization within Keller Williams to actually master the MREA at a high level. I mean, it's like the one tenth of 1%. And I would say 90% of the Keller Williams agents that I speak to around the country have no concept how to implement the MREA into their life or into their business. And what we look at is this MREA are these four models. Well, I don't think that's accurate at all. And I don't think that's true. I think there's only one model and they happen to have four parts to it. And the one model is the model of reciprocity. And when you understand that the MREA is designed as a model of reciprocity, then what you, what you know about that is that we all have an opportunity to contribute to having a career worth owning a business or a career worth having a business worth owning and a life worth living. We have a duty and a responsibility as agents that have been in this business for a long time to take that knowledge, that intellectual property, the experiences that we've had and give those opportunities to new agents that are coming into the business. And that allows us to create the leverage within our organization that we're entitled to have because of the amount of time and effort we put into gaining this knowledge. So I'm gonna to try to dumb this down a little bit and simplify this a little bit. What I recognized when I came in as a team leader at Keller Williams Santa Monica is that we were not in culture. We weren't in culture whatsoever. We weren't running a seventh level model uh, market center and our agents weren't running big models and thinking big. We have a mentor program within our market center where new agents as mentees would come into the market center and be assigned mentors. And those mentors would get paid an override for the first few transactions that the mentees did. But the mentors were waiting for the mentees to bring them the transaction. 
And I'm like, whoa, wait a second. We've got a problem here, Houston. We've got all these agents that are mentors that have been in the business for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. And they feel like their role is to just assist the mentee in getting through a few transactions. Yet the real opportunity is for the mentor to take the mentee under their wing and be able to create leverage with the mentee for the mentor. In other words, if, you're, if you've been in the business for 20 years and you're going on a listing appointment and you go by yourself, like shame on you. How, how are you ever going to be able to share the intellectual property that you have, the knowledge that you have, the culture you've created within your business with somebody else that might be able to pick up the pieces when you're not available or you don't want to do it anymore. And if you're a mentee and you're new in the business and you're just sitting around waiting for your first appointment and your mentor says, this is what you need to do, go get it. And you come back and you didn't get it because you didn't have the mentor sitting there with you, helping you and coaching you. Like we are in one big ginormous model of reciprocity. And it just happens to have four parts to it. And when you understand that mastering lead generation is the number one most important thing that you can ever do for scalability, right? It's that you've got to master lead generation. And when you master lead generation, then you then have a duty to, to show others how to help you with that lead generation. That's called the organizational model. We don't have a right to master the organizational model until we've mastered the lead generation model because we don't have anything to feed into the organizational model, right? The organizational model only works if you have transactions. It only works if you have a business, right? right. Like you, you, have, you have listings or you have buyers or you understand how to, if you're a master at lead generating on Facebook through command or you're a master at farming or you're a master at your sphere of influence, or you're a master at your database, Mastering lead generation gives you the right to help others master lead generation, right? By modeling the behavior, modeling the activity, modeling the consistency, right? Modeling that repetition in lead generation as a rainmaker, right? You're a rainmaker. So go out and make it rain. And then you, re you bring people into your world to be able to share all those opportunities and all that knowledge that you have. And it's a rest, it's a, it's a reciprocal relationship. And there happens to be an economic model for that reciprocal relationship called the economic model, right? There's hey. a, so once you've learned to master lead generation, like I meet these agents all the time that have been in business for 25 years and they go, ah, oh, you know, I close 20 deals a year. I'm pretty good. I'm happy. Well, if anybody looked at the slide that Gary Keller presented at Family Reunion, where he said, if, if you were to start with one transaction 20 years ago, 20 years later, if you were truly doing business by referral and by design, you should be doing 1,600 transactions a year. Well, you know what? All these agents that say I've been in business for 25 years and my business is referral and repeat business and I'm doing 25 deals a year or 20 or 15 deals a year, there's a disconnection somewhere right? There's a disconnection there because the truth of the matter is we should be doing more business every year than we did the year before just by virtue of organically providing a high level of fiduciary care to our clients, yet that doesn't seem to be the pattern. So to break the pattern, we have to, we, we have to give back and we have to grow and we, we have to take these agents underneath our wing and show them how to hang a lockbox. So here's what happened to me the other day, and I'd like to share this experience. I recruited a $20 million producer to our Keller Williams Santa Monica Market Center. And he's like, Andrew, I'm overwhelmed. I've got five listings. I've got five pending offers. I've got five new listings coming on. I've got photo shoots. I've got lockboxes to take off. And I've got walkthroughs, and I have no leverage. I'm coming to you because I need leverage. I said, Justin, come into the office tomorrow. I need you to come into the office. I've got nine new agents, brand new agents in my office. And I want, I want you to come in for just a few minutes. So he said, okay. He came in the next day and I went on the whiteboard with Justin. And I said, okay, everybody's in the room. Nine brand new agents and Justin. 15 year veteran, 20 million in production, crushing it. And I said, Justin, let's go through your pipeline right now. How many listings do you have? And we put them on the board. Okay. How many are occupied? How many are vacant? What's the situation? What do you have in escrow? Okay, great. What do you have coming up? You have three photo shoots. You have a walkthrough. You have this and that. Okay, then I said, there's nine agents in the room. 
How many of you want to go hang a lockbox for Justin for free? And they all raise their hand. How many of you want to go to a photo shoot and learn how to photograph a new listing for free? And they all raise their hand. How many of you want to go to a walkthrough with Justin and see what a walkthrough looks like? And they all raise their hand, right? None of them are looking for pay, right? Now, how many of you are willing to do some of these activities for 5% and they all raise their hand? And how many of you feel like if you gained a little more knowledge and experience um, and Justin paid you 10% to go to the photo shoot on your own and hang a couple lockbox, would you do that? And they all raise their hand. Now, I looked at Justin, I said, Justin, by the way, you don't have anything in your calendar for the rest of the week because every task that you had on your calendar has just been delegated at zero cost to you. In fact, if you really like what you're experiencing, you could shift what normally would be an expense to leverage these activities to a cost of sell for these activities. So let's go through what the difference is between an expense and a cost of sell. And then we broke it down. What I'm telling you guys is that you're, you've already got more than what you need to succeed in this business at a high level and take your business to another level. And it's right within you. It's in your market center. It's in the MREA. The MREA is way too complicated for 95% of the people. You're never going to do it. It's just... It, once you start to understand that it's a model of reciprocity, and you understand that you only deserve, you only have the right to go to level three or four when you've mastered lead generation, right? You don't, level two and level three don't require you to master lead generation. Level two and level three is the road to mastering lead generation. Then once you have, you go to level four because that's when you bring on your first quote unquote buyer's agent, right? because you've mastered lead generation. I just think this whole thing becomes totally blown out of proportion and then nobody does it. So what we have to understand is that we have a sequential model. If you've been in the business for any length of time, you've got to take career visioning, 30, 60, 90, success through others for $149 with Jonathan Dupree, May 15th and 16th. I, I used to pay $1,500 to go take career visioning from Ben Kenny or Seth Campbell or Kristen Cole, fly all over the country, take these classes as a REMAX agent, right? I was with REMAX for 20 years. I did $40 million a year in production for 20 years. I hit a ceiling of achievement. I couldn't get out of my own way. I mastered lead generation at the highest level, but I never was introduced to the organizational model. Therefore, I could never increase my lead generation activity because I had no way of handling more leads. I was losing, I was losing a half a million dollars in GCI because I would lose the yellow sticky notes where I would write open house sign-in sheets that I would find three months later in the trunk of my car. I didn't understand the organizational model, but I mastered lead. See, oh, we lost Andrew. A little frozen there. Let me explain while he's frozen. I'm sure he'll be back in a second. What I'm hearing Andrew saying that I think is important for all of our agents is that if you're experienced and out there trying to grow and build your business and or you're in KW because you love the culture um, and the give back part of it, then let's seek out some ways to help, right? I love what Andrew says. I think just having an agent right along with you, go to your showing with you, come to a listing presentation, like that's how you're gonna get better as a realtor too. And I know I, I saw some new agents raise their hand in the chat box like, yes, I love this, let's do that. I'm ready to do that. So thank you for sharing that, Andrew. Well, and the other thing I, I, the other thing I would just add is, is, is our, our culture is one of abundance, right? Not scarcity. And so the ability yes. to kind of pay that forward is such an important opportunity. So Andrew, back to you. <laughs> Diane, I love that. And I talk about that every day. You guys, I do at 7.30 in the morning Pacific time, Monday through Friday, I have conversations around how we win in today's real estate market. It's free. I don't charge. It's five days a week, 7.30 to 8 a.m. Pacific time at bvoclassroom.com. I'll throw it in the chat. Bravo, Victor, Oscar, classroom.com. We have commission compression on the buyer side of the transaction like we've never seen before. We have commission compression on the listing side of the transaction that we've never seen before. I have conversations to help you deal with this at a high, high, high level. 
where you're going to get compensated what you deserve, what you get as a buyer and agent. We're going to see commissions in MLS go from 3% to 2.5% to 2 to 1.5% to 1 to 0. And guess what? Mr. Buyer. My value proposition is so high. Every day I'm prospecting for off-market opportunities for you. I network. I belong to the biggest network in Austin, Texas. We know when off-market properties are coming. Some of these properties don't have any commission. My fee is not included in some of these deals that we're going to find. And sometimes in MLS, my fee isn't completely paid. Are you okay with me finding you properties that aren't paying my entire fee and you can cover the difference? Or do you only want me to focus on the on the stuff that's covering my fee, right? Like there's so many consultative conversations that I have on this Monday through Friday call. If you're a new agent, ride along, ride along with a seasoned agent, but be careful. They don't know what they don't they don't know that you should be doing that. They don't understand. Like this is a collaboration. This Keller Williams has given us this gift of abundance and reciprocity at the highest level. When I was, I was teaching in the market center yesterday and behind me is the sign that says, at Keller Williams, we don't learn for knowledge sake, we learn for earning sake. And somebody can quote the exact quote for me because I don't have it in front of me, right? But we believe in learning for earning sake, for profits, not for knowing sake. So if you've been in the business for 25 years and you haven't grown your team because you don't wanna manage people, Five years ago, I took my first executive leadership course. I was a REMAX agent and I sat through ESO and I said, you know what? It's not about management. It's about leadership. And leadership is about following models and systems. And then as soon as I, I went from 40 million to 72 million that year in production, the next year I went to 98 million. All I did was take career visioning 30, 60, 90 and ESO about another 10 times. And I stayed at REMAX. And then the following year, I moved to KW and I went to 158 million and then 183 million and then 186 million last year. All, and I moved to Santa Monica and took a team leader role. So these are, I am so passionate about this. And for those of you that don't know me, I grew up in foster care. I was homeless till I was 11 years old, beaten every day of my life, went into foster care at 11 until I was 14 seven high schools, dropped out of high school, got my degree in social work. I have a bachelor's in social work. And I went to work as a low income housing advocate in the city of Phoenix. Three years later, I got my real estate license to be a better housing advocate because I was going to court representing tenants against landlords that were just awful. I got my real estate license. I read the fine print. It said, hey buddy, you can go sell anything to anybody anytime you want. There's no limits to your growth. Right. So I, so I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to just keep growing. Anyway, fast forward, long story short, um, red day on Thursday, my Santa Monica Keller Williams office has adopted the orphanage that I lived in when I was 11 years old as red, as their red day. We have two other agents in my office that were adopted out of this orphanage. We have an agent in my office whose family founded 111 years ago, Vista Del Mar was created. Well, anyway, long story short, you can do whatever you want. You can have everything that you want in this world. And all you really honestly have to do is just follow the models and systems that Gary's given us because he has given us a, a gift that does not ever stop giving. You know, it's, a, it's just a joyful gift of abundance. So that's I'll open this up for any questions, any thoughts, anything that anybody wants to share. And then I want to thank you guys for giving me grace this morning and allowing me to take this call in my car. Well, we appreciate you being here, Andrew. And, um, you know, time zones are a tricky thing. So with, with that, I just wanted to, to say to some of our new agents on the line, right? If you haven't seen what Andrew is referring to, this is the millionaire real estate agent. Um, and I, what I think was really incredible, Andrew, when I was reading your bio and when we talked um, a couple of times earlier is just, you know, you started from a place of pure giving and abundance in your heart to care for others. And you've grown this really big business. I mean, we didn't even say it yet, but Andrew's closed over a billion dollars in volume. That was a B, y'all, a billion dollars in volume. And yet you wake up every morning early to do a call for free to help others to 
give people motivation and inspiration. And that's something that I think is really unique and amazing about this company that we're in and we're, that we're with. Um, and I just love that you're sharing that. I, I really just want our agents to hear how much of Andrew's story is giving back and it still is. Right. And even right now you're giving back, you're taking your kids to go give back to a market center. So, um, really, really cool. And, um, and I, I'd love to hear you talk even just a little sure. about like what, um, hi. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I was just putting that in the chat. What would you like to talk um, about? I'd love for you to talk a little bit about what, you know, what it was that you think made the biggest difference to, to grow your career. Um, you give back a lot, you do a lot for your community. Anything else our agents should know? Yeah, well, what happened for me was I was a low-income housing advocate. So I was assigned low-income neighborhoods. And within those neighborhoods, my responsibility was to be resource and referral, right? So if they needed a food box, if they needed utility assistance, we could do cleanup projects. If they needed a, a, a bed, if they needed their carpets cleaned, if they wanted to take some advanced classes and or English as a second language. But I worked for Head Start. Head Start is a federally funded preschool program for low-income families. So I, every family that I had in these communities had children that were in the Head Start program. In these trenches as a social worker, it, and I, I grew up in a very similar environment. After, after, really after about a year, I would go into these neighborhoods and the families would run out of their houses. Mr. Bloom, Mr. Bloom, thank you for, you know, Johnny loves his new bike or loves a pair of shoes or thank you for the food box. And I became kind of the mayor of these low income neighborhoods, right? And then when I got my real estate license, I'm like, you know, if I can just concentrate in, a, in one neighborhood or one community where people know me and respect me and admire them and I can come from contribution and I can contribute and give back into these neighborhoods at a high level, then people are going to know me, like me, and want to work with me. So I immediately began my real estate career geographically farming. And I'll, I, I remember it like yesterday, I, you know, I was farming 200 doors around where I lived. And as I started gaining some experience and knowledge and commission income, I expanded my farm to 500 doors. And instead of walking all those doors every week of 200, which are easy to do, I would start dropping postcards to these 500 doors. And I'm like, well, wow, that's leverage. I just knocked 500 doors in five minutes by dropping off 500 postcards at the mailbox at the post office. Well, two years later, I expanded my farm to 4,000 doors and I became the mayor of that community. And I was doing 20 million. I still do 20 million a year out of that 4,000 door farm, but I was doing $20 million a year out of these 4,000 door farm. And I was purposeful about identifying the farm because I wanted to increase my average sell price and I was never going to live in the farm. So I knew that in order for me to master it at a high level and have top market share, I would need to treat that farm like a Mets database, even though I don't know them. And even though I don't live there, if I act as if I do, if I pretend like I do by the frequency in which I'm in touch with the people that live there, and I'm providing value as if I have the inside scoop on the neighborhood, then people are going to know me, like me, and trust me, and use me. And I, and I have had number, number one market share I still do in that 4,000-door farm in Scottsdale. Well, that sustained me for almost 20 years. Like I was doing 40 million a year, 20 million in my farm, 20 million from re re repeat and referral business and past clients. When I took ESO, ESO really showed me that the organizational model and the economic and budget models were about running a business, right? If you master lead generation, you have a career worth having. Right. If we just if we just peel the onion back about Keller Williams, right? What's the purpose in it? Well, the purpose in it is to have a career worth having, a business worth owning, and a life worth living. Right. So most of us never get past the career worth having. We just stop there. We never get to a business worth owning. Only only one percent of Keller Williams agents ever get to a business worth owning. Like, think about it. If you've been in this business for 25 years and with your KW, some of you 
don't can't just walk away today and like okay the mrea is the greatest keller williams is the is the best revenue share model in the industry we have a rev share model that nobody talks about and it really is important for all of us to understand the rev share model does everybody understand that I live in Santa Monica on the beach and my team in Arizona did 5.2 million in GCI last year and I made over a million dollars in revenue profit, rev profit, rev share. I made over, I'm not talking about profit share. I could care less about profit share. If I made, if I made ten, fifty thousand dollars or a hundred grand in profit share last year, but I made a million dollars in revenue share, meaning that I'm the rainmaker I'm the rainmaker, I make it rain, I master lead generation, I teach others how to master lead generation, and then for all the business that they do that I've taught them how to master, I get a small piece of that. That's revenue share, right? Right, right. Well, and, and a, I went back a seventh for- level, A seventh right. level business is a rev share business. EXP Absolutely. doesn't have anything on us. <laughs> well, one thing I want to make sure is some of our agents here that don't know MREA or Millionaire Real Estate Agent as well as you and I do and some of our team leaders on the call. Um, when you're when you're saying all this, I, I want I want people to really hear like you're you were rookie of the year in 1995. This did not happen overnight. You didn't just wake up one day and decide, I'm going to be a millionaire real estate agent and I'm going to go make all this money and have revenue share and build this business. This was a time on the task over time effort that you put forward to build that business from the ground up. And I just, I really want people to hear that. This was not, it's not even something you just did five years ago. You've been doing this over the last 25, 26 years. Yeah, and I thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you for, you know, for honoring that, Jennifer. The, the, there's, a, there's a way to get further faster, right? And the way to get further faster is to align yourself with your tribe. And if you're newer in the business, seek out people that want to help you succeed and share their models and systems with you. Be willing to give up whatever you got to give up to serve them, right? There's an apprenticeship opportunity waiting for you as a, men, as a mentee. The issue that we have is that the mentors don't recognize, they don't, most, most of the agents that have been around for a long time don't, they, they see it as, you know, maybe they, maybe they want to help you and they'll mentor you and they'll take a, little piece of your first few deals they're not they're not they don't have an exit strategy themselves and they're not necessarily mastering the models at a high level like there are some really basic fundamental everything that i'm doing and talking about are really basic it's 101 real estate it really is and i didn't learn these things until i took eso and career visioning over and over and over again and yes i was in the trenches for a long time, sacrificing my life, my fatherhood, my duties as a husband. You know, I mean, it, the real estate industry prior to technology getting to where it is, it was an analog business. We had to be in the trenches. We had to be in the field. We had to show up and sign counter offers at 10 o'clock at night or 11 p.m. or go run to the office at midnight to send a fax. Or like today, we there's there's no excuse to not be living your perfect life, right? Yeah. So. I love that. And I'm available. Look, I'm available every day. If anybody ever wants to just dive a little deeper or peel the onion back, or if you text, if you text uh, refer BBO to 59559, you'll have some of my, I'm going to just put it in the chat here. Um, I don't know what's in there right now, but if you, if you just text this, text, uh, Refer BBO, R E F E R B V O to five nine five five nine. Did I do that right? I can't see it on my glasses. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I'm an open book and I'm willing to share models and systems. How do you structure this financially as a seasoned agent? when you want to bring somebody into your business so that they can help you hang a lockbox, go to a photo shoot, and then 
God forbid, if you can't show up for a showing, you can call that agent and say, hey, I've got a conflict on Saturday at one. Do you mind opening that listing up? And if they buy it, I'll pay you 5%. Or, hey, why don't I pay you 5% when the deal closes? And these are the 10 things that I'd like you to do. And after you've done this a few times with me, I'll give you 10%. And then after you do it a few more times with me, I'll give you 15%. And then you cap out at 20%. And the IMREA says you can cap out at 25%. It really says 30%, but 25% cost of sale. You shouldn't exceed that, right? So, but what does that even mean? And like in practical purposes, I think most people don't quite understand what cost of sale means and what those percentages mean and how to use it in your business to give yourself leverage and contribute to the growth of other people. I promise you, if you've been in the business for less than a year, raise your hand. How many people have been in the business less than a year and have done less than, if you've done less than three transactions, right? Raise your hand. If you had an agent that said, that, that said to you, hey, I've got a listing appointment Friday at two o'clock. Would you like to go and audit the listing appointment and just sit there as a scribe and take notes about everything we talk about? Would you be willing to do that? With, for no compensation, just to come out to the listing appointment and take notes and observe what it's like to sit in somebody's living room and consult with them, right? If you, if you would do that, just put a thumbs up in the comment section. Now, if the agent that's taking you says, you know what, I'm gonna give you 5% of this deal when it closes. So here's what it looks like mathematically. It's a $500,000 deal. It's a $15,000 commission. You're gonna earn $750 for coming with me on the listing appointment coming back and hanging the lockbox, showing up for the photo shoot, and maybe doing an open house where if there's a lead, you're going to split it with me 50-50. How many of you be, would be willing to do that? Like put it in the... Now, if you're the rainmaker and you're bringing on an agent at 5% cost of sell, zero expense, 5% cost of sell, with a roadmap, we call it the opportunity map at Keller Williams, that says, look, when you've done five of these, I'll bump you to 10%. And by the way, if you have your own listing, I'll go with you to the appointment. You can keep 65% of that income or 50% of that. I'll go with you to help you convert it and I'll count it as one of your five as you get to 10%. I'm just telling you guys, this is the MREA when you peel the onion back. Like this is the unabridged English layman's way of what the MREA says like this is it like I'm just trying to summarize the MREA in five or six minutes for people every day and these are the examples and samples that I use because it's too big of a book it's gonna like if you're new in the business it's you don't need to know the economic and budget models now if if you're an entrepreneur or you've been in business a long time you can understand the concepts but if you don't master lead generation in the first place, the other three models are irrelevant. That's very right. true. That's very true. Well, and I, I know, Andrew, it looks like you might have pulled up where you're supposed to be next. Yeah, but... I'm good. You guys are amazing. <laughs> thank you for your grace. Thank you for your time. Yeah. No, thank you, really. I... Tell JP hello. <laughs> I will. Um, I would love to also ask before we open up to any other questions, just... You're talking a lot about this symbiotic relationship and it's so lovely and wonderful. And I know it's something that a ton of our newer agents have raised their hand in the chat box and said, yes, please. Um, what are you telling your team specifically? Like when you bring on newer agents who are on your team, is it different today? Are they doing different things besides <laughs> using technology? Um, what, what would you tell a new agent to be doing right now? I, I will tell you that I have a firm belief that nobody gets their real estate license to prospect. <laughs> people get their real estate license that, because yeah. they want to help people. They want to be in belly to belly in front of a buyer and seller. And as soon as you can get, the sooner you, you can get into what I call momentum of dollar product. If, if you've never been on a listing appointment, raise your hand. Like just for, just if you've never been on one, if we have, do we have one or two people? We've never have, been on a listing appointment. Several, for sure. In the can you 118 know, people on. So, would you be willing if there was an agent out there that what that you admired and respected? Let's just say it that way. 
and said, hey, would you like to come with me on a listing appointment? How many of you would want to go? So when you can, when you can actually get into momentum, get into the activity that results in right, conversion, here's what happens. I, I, I have this saying about the four C's of real estate, the four C's. Your competency increases your confidence, which increases your conversion rate, which increases your cash flow. Your competency increases your confidence. How do you gain competency? Going on appointments, getting in front of buyers and sellers. Because if you're going out there Trump pretending to be confident or to, to pretending to be competent, it, it sounds it comes off as arrogance or commission breath. Mm -hmm. Go on a few listing appointments. Take if you're if you if you've been in the business for any length of time, if you have a listing appointment. I don't care if you've been in the business for a day or a hundred years. Don't go alone. Do not ever go alone. There's no reason to. There, you can't even be a good fiduciary if you're by yourself. Because God forbid something happens to you the next day. Who's going to hang the lockbox? Do you know what I'm saying? Like we, like we have a duty to be present as a fiduciary all the time. And, and so bring somebody with you. I mean, this is why ambulance drivers drive in pairs, right? Like you've got to have a backup plan. God forbid something would happen to you. You know, when you have an emergency, you got to leave town and you can't make the photo shoot because you your aunt passed away. Well, guess what? You can take that new agent and say, hey, listen, we have a photo shoot tomorrow night. You've already gone through a photo shoot exercise with me. So you know to go a few days beforehand and make sure all the light bulbs are working and the pool cleaners out of the pool and everything's ready to go. And then you meet the photographer and this is what merchandising looks like. I will tell you that I have, I have agents hanging lockboxes for other agents and they're excited about it. <laughs> they're actually taking photos and posting them on Facebook. I'm hanging a lockbox out at 123 Main Street today. Like... You guys, we take we take it for granted. It is an inconvenience that we got to go hang a lockbox on the other side of town or take one off after closing. Listen, make a list of. It's the Pareto principle. You have a you've earned the right to operate in your twenty percent. Now take that eighty percent and go give it to somebody else whose twenty percent it is. Like that's magic to them. That's their twenty percent. They get to him. They get to love that. My God, I get to meet a photographer and I could take a picture of me at the photo shoot and post it on Facebook and repurpose this content and let my friends and family know that I'm selling real estate and I'm out in the field and I'm doing it. Uh, I love you guys. Mad yeah. love, mad love. How are we doing? Awesome. No, you're I... wonderful. You're wonderful. It's We're at 12-12, so I want to make sure to get you off timely. Who has okay. questions for Andrew? This was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Even from your car, you have great energy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I have a question. It's really, really important. You have two beautiful people in your car. Are they avoiding real estate or are they getting into real estate? We're in the car because we're in the trenches of it. <laughs> I bet you The are. other two siblings aren't in the car because they're not. So, so what you don't understand is Austin's 26 years old. He's flying all over the country, launching YP chapters. He was just in Texas. Participating in the launches. It <laughs> takes a lot more effort he, on the ground. He runs uh, the $200 million real estate team. He runs the whole operation out of Arizona. My daughter is our director of operations who's moving home after playing four years of college hockey and taking a year in Boston. But they've taken Quantum Leap, right? With Gary Keller, they've been in Quantum Leap. They've been... Austin teases, they, they've been putting labels on postcards since they were three years old. That's true. Congratulations. A lot of back, awesome. of back pain. Congratulations, y'all. And, they, and, they, and they, they absolutely both crush it at a really high level, you know. And there's my man, Justin. There's my big old $20 million producer. I love how proud Andrew is as a dad. I love that. I love how proud he is. That's an amazing job, and it's showing in your next generation. That's pretty cool. That's it. great. That's great. Like, who is that? <laughs> What's up, Justin? <laughs> uh, hey, hey, this is the guy. This is this $20 million producer 
that I brought into the office who was freaking out. And I said, hey, Justin, let's go through, let's go through your pipeline and see what we can do to create, hey, Justin, you guys got to hear that. Like, this is legit. Justin, this is the end. All Austin, Texas wide Keller Hi. Williams meeting. Ah, okay. Hi, nice to meet you. So Justin just moved over from Cobo Banker. Welcome. Woo Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. So, what was your, what was, like, what have you learned over the last, what has it been, a couple of weeks we've really been together, right? Do more business. <laughs> but you can do more business. Yeah, I can't do what more What he business. learned is he can do more business. Indeed. Because he mastered lead generation, and in about a week and a half, I've probably been able to coach him on the organizational model in a different, in a way that he's never seen before. True, true, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just learning it and doing it now. Like he walked into the office last week with four million things to do. His hair is on fire. He's got all these listings coming up, all these inspections, all these appraisals. What was it like to take an agent to hang a lockbox? Like think about it. like you guys have to hear this. It, it was fun, you know, because you don't remember all the stuff that happens, it gets stuck. If it's wet and it rusts, the buttons jam. One one key is still stuck in the lockbox as we speak, that far as needs to get to. Uh, so it's those little things that we forget, as you mentioned. Yeah. And it's just fun to see the agents get excited because it's not a big deal for us anymore. It's just routine. Uh, but uh, you know, these are things that people have to figure out. Yeah, thanks, Jess. I'll see all you in right. just a second. So here's the deal. All of you on this call could ride a tricycle. But I guarantee you, you'll get more joy teaching your grandchild how to ride. <laughs> that is true. That's a perfect analogy. Thank you. <laughs> you, you just became goals. Yeah, I just became goals. goals. I like it. Yeah, you just <laughs> became <laughs> goals, man. For real. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, uh, I didn't have any questions for Andrew before we let him go back to his busy and amazing real estate career that he has built over the last 26 years. And we're so proud to be in business with him at KW. Thank you. Anybody else? Just thank you for your time, Andrew. Thanks you guys so much. I appreciate it. We appreciate look forward to you. catching up again soon. Hopefully I'll see a few of you on the call tomorrow morning at 7.30 Pacific time. I love it. I love it. Okay. 9 Pacific, 9.30 our time. Thank yep. you so much, Andrew. We appreciate you. Thanks you guys. Thank you. Thanks for your grace. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And for everybody in our KW family here in Austin, we appreciate you guys being on the call today. Please make sure you sign up for Red Day in your market center. If you don't know what your market center is doing for Red Day, reach out to your team leader. They're probably either on here or they'll be willing to take your call right away because we are super excited to see you guys to continue to build our community with each other. And we're going to share all those slides and all that data because that's some pretty cool stuff for y'all. So y'all go out into the world. Enjoy this week. Enjoy Red Day. And thank you again for coming. Jen, thank you for a Bye. wonderful meeting today. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye, y'all.